With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The ring of the silver spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy. The same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? California and I were a tired pair of cowpokes as we threaded our way along the moonlit trail leading up to the Rutledge Ranch. A long day in the saddle sure made us look forward to the Rutledge hospitality. The lights of the ranch house marked the end of our ride. Well, we're almost there, California. Think you can stick on for another minute? Oh, darn it, Hoppy. I feel like I'm so stuck to the saddle I won't be able to get off. <laughs> I thought you said that Jeff Rutledge and his daughter lived just outside of Rimbrock. I didn't remember it being this far myself, but it's been three or four years since I've been in these parts. Hey, look at all them horses at the hitching rail there. Looks like they get a pass of the company, Hoppy. Yeah, it does it that. Well, let's tie up and see what's going on. Oh, ah. boy. <laughs> Sure feels good to stretch some of the kinks out of my legs again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're beginning to sound like an old man, California. Come on, we'll say hello and then take care of the horses. Hey. Listen, uh, ain't that a fiddler here? Sounds like it, all right. Must be a party going on. Party, huh? Uh, that means eat, don't it, Hoppy? <laughs> uh, there you go, worrying about your stomach again. Oh, Why, it's Mr. Cassidy. <laughs> it sure is. But it's hard for me to believe you're Beth Rutley. Now, don't you dare tell me how big I've grown since you last saw me. All right. But you've grown very pretty, too. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, Beth, this is my old sidekick, California Carl. Oh, how do you do? How do you, Miss Beth? Oh, this is a real surprise. Now my birthday is complete. Well, come on in and join the party. Thanks, we will. Say, it looks like quite a turnout here. Oh, yes, and I guess everybody that ever knew me is here. Dad planned the whole thing. He says it isn't every day a girl gets to be 18. He's right, too. And happy birthday, Beth. Yeah, sure, happy birthday. Thanks, sure. both of you. I, um, uh, I don't see your dad anywhere. Oh, he went back to his room a few minutes ago. He'll be right out. Oh. That's uh, a right nice-looking cake you got over there. California. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'll see you get a, an extra big peek, California. <laughs> That sounded like a shot. Oh, came from the hall down there. From Dad's room. Come on. What's happened? Well, that shot must have come from this room. What's the matter, Hoppy? What's well, locked? Stand back. Maybe I can break it open. It's Jeff. He's been shot. Look, the wind is open. Hoppy. Is he? Yeah. Is... Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bad Medicine at Rimrock. Hoppy and California were passing through Rimrock and decided to visit an old friend who lived nearby. They arrived at Jeff Rutledge's ranch at night and found a party in progress in honor of Beth Rutledge's 18th birthday. Beth's welcome was interrupted by a shot from her father's room, and when the guests rushed in, Jeff Rutledge was found slumped over his desk, dead. Go on now, clear out. Clear out of here, all of you, clear out. This ain't no place for a crowd. Get on back to the parlor. You mind if I stick around, Sheriff? Jeff was an old friend of mine. I'm Cassidy from the Bar 20 up north. Oh, sure. I've heard Jeff speak of you, Cassidy. Uh, this is another old friend of Jeff, Doc Weaver. Hello, Cassidy. Sorry I'm meeting you under such tragic circumstances. Poor Jeff. Murdered in cold blood. Yeah. I'm just afraid that the killer made a clean getaway. No chance of finding him around here at night. 
Any idea who had it in for Jeff enough to commit murder, Sheriff? Well, no, I don't. Jeff wasn't the friendliest cuss in the world. But as far as I know, he didn't have any real enemies. That's right. Unless you could call Cleet Johnson an enemy. Who is Cleet Johnson? Oh, he owns the ranch next to the Rutledge place here. He and Jeff have been having some trouble for a couple of years. Well, somebody wanted Jeff out of the way. Doesn't look like robbery. His desk hasn't been disturbed. I'll be hanged if I know how to figure this thing. Whoever shot Jeff must have been here at the party, come back to Jeff's room, and after he shot him, crawled out the window. Or he might have been outside all the time and fired at Jeff through the open window. Yeah, I guess it could have been that way. Too late to look for footprints now, though. After half the people here have been walking around out there. Say, what are you doing there, Cassidy? I think I'm getting the bullet that got Jeff through the heart. I can feel a lump in the padding in the back of his chair. Mm, uh, yeah, good idea. Uh, here we are. Take a look at this, Sheriff. Why, that ain't no forty-five bullet. It's too small. Yeah. This looks like a bullet from one of those old derringers. Why, nobody in these parts packs one of them things. Say, just a minute. I believe Jimmy Bolton owns a gun like that. Jimmy Bolton? Yeah, he's Dutch Bolton's kid. Dutch runs a Sun Nugget Saloon. Yes, young Bolton has a gun collection, Cassidy, and I'm sure it contains a derringer. Well, well, maybe we're on the right trail here. Come to think of it, Jeff didn't approve of Jimmy Court and his daughter, Beth. That's right, Sheriff. I believe Jeff had told Jimmy he didn't want his daughter getting mixed up with a saloon keeper's son. Was uh, Jimmy Bolton here tonight? Yes, he was. I suppose Jeff gave in to Beth since it was her birthday party. I haven't seen him since just before the shooting, though. Disappeared all of a sudden, huh? Maybe he had a good reason to disappear. Yeah, looks like Jimmy Bolton's our man, all right. He must have come in to talk things over with Jeff and got mad and shot him. I wonder. Will you still be here for the funeral, Cassidy? Yeah, I'll be here, Sheriff. In fact, I might be around for quite a while. I know it's hard to talk about what happened last night, Beth, but California and I want to help. Of course you do, Mr. Cassidy, and I appreciate it. But what can you do? I don't know. Maybe nothing. But if what you've told me about Jimmy Bolton is true, they must be after the wrong man. Oh, they are. They are. I know Jimmy didn't kill Dad. What about Jimmy's father, Dutch Bolton? Well, I don't know much about him. His Nugget Saloon has a bad reputation, of course. Yeah, so I hear. Well, California and I are going to ride into Rimrock and... Oh, look. There's our neighbor, Mr. Johnson, riding up out front. Cleet Johnson? Yes, I wonder what he wants. Well, let's step out on the porch and find out. Hello, Mr. Johnson. Oh, hello, Beth. I uh, just wanted to stop by and tell you that uh, I'm sorry about your father. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Oh, this is Hopalong Cassidy, an old friend of Dad's. How are you? Fine, thanks. You mind telling me how you knew what happened last night, Johnson? I understand you weren't at the party. Well, uh, well, no, I wasn't, but a friend of mine stopped by the place this morning and told me about it. I see. Yeah. Hey, what are you getting at? Oh, nothing much, maybe. But I've heard you and Jeff didn't exactly care for each other. Now, that's true, Cassidy. But that's none of your business. And I'd advise you to watch your step. If you're trying oh, to... please, men. I'm sorry, Beth. I think California's got the horses saddled by now, so we'll be riding. Well, Mrs. Roberts is going to stay with me, so I'll be all right. Sure you will. We'll see you later. So long, Johnson. So long, Cassidy, and be careful, won't you? Let's look up the sheriff here at the jail. This jail looks like a good gust of wind would blow her over, Hoppy. <laughs> Well, don't start telling one of your tall stories, then. Huh? I wouldn't want it to collapse while we're in it. Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, come in, Cassidy. The doc and I were just having a game of checkers. Have a chair. Thanks. Uh, Sheriff Hollister, Doc Weaver, meet California Carlson. How are you? Howdy. Howdy. I wasn't sure you'd be in, Sheriff. Thought maybe you'd be out with a posse. Oh, then you haven't heard. We didn't have to form a posse after all. Picked up the boat and kid at his house. Well, that is a surprise. Got him locked up here now? Yep. I figured on taking him to the county seat tomorrow. The sheriff here says the kid put on quite an act. Pretended he didn't know Rutledge had been shot. What about the gun? Oh, he admits he used to own one like that. 
but claims it was stole from him a while back. I figure he threw it away. Leastways, it wasn't around his house anywhere. What did he have to say about the party last night? Well, of course, we all know he was there. Only he says he left the party and rode home alone before the shooting. Hmm. Looks like he's in a pretty bad fix, doesn't it? It sure does, Cassidy. Too bad, too. I always liked the kid in spite of his father. Well, I did, too. But there's been a murder, and I won't be satisfied till I see justice done. Somehow it doesn't seem possible Jeff is dead. I guess when you've known a man for 27 years, you just can't bring yourself to believe the facts. Yeah, it's pretty hard to take, all right. Well, men, <clears throat> it's time for me to be getting over to the barber shop. See you all later. Oh, don't rush off, Doc. You don't have to get that mustache and goatee trimmed every day. I'll be back, <laughs> sir. Good day, gentlemen. Eh, yeah, poor old Doc. He's taken Jeff's death pretty hard. They were thick and thieves since the Doc come out here a few months back. I thought he said he knew Jeff for 27 years. He did. That was way back east. Say, uh, would you fellas do me a favor? I, uh, I didn't get much breakfast this morning. How about keeping an eye on things while I run over to the cafe? Hey, that's a fine idea. I'll, I'll go along and keep you company. Now, nah, California. Uh, huh? Sure, we'll hang around, Sheriff. Any objections to my talking to Jimmy Bolton? No, oh, go right ahead. I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> No, Jimmy, Beth doesn't think you shot her, Dad. She's behind you all the way. Well, gee, I'm sure glad of that, but but what about you? Do, do you think I did it? No, I don't either, Jimmy. But don't ask me why right now. By the way, uh, how long ago was your gun stolen? Mm, about a month ago, as near as I can remember. I'd been sick with a fever and noticed it was gone when I was up and around again. I see. Jimmy, I understand Jeff Rutledge and your dad didn't get on too well. What about it? Well... Dad was angry because Jeff Rutledge didn't want me to court Beth. Dad said just because he ran a saloon didn't make him any worse than Rutledge or anybody else. He did have a few bad words a couple of times. I hear your dad's a pretty fair shot. Oh, oh he sure is. Why, why, he can hit a crow in the eye at... Say, what are you driving at, Mr. Cassidy? Well, you don't think Dad had anything to do with the Rutledge killing, do you? Not necessarily. But it sounds like they weren't exactly friendly. And your own gun missing from your house. Well, let me warn you, Cassidy. It might not be healthy for you if Dad finds out you're talking that way. Well, maybe we can keep it a secret. And don't worry, Jimmy. We'll figure something out. I'll see you a little later. Yeah. You know where you can find me. Oh, nothing much I didn't already know, I guess. Yeah, looks like he's as good as good as neck in the noose, don't it? I'm afraid it does. But there's something mighty peculiar about this whole business, California. Yeah? What do you mean by that? I don't know exactly. i got to have some time to think things out. Well, go right ahead. I'll continue with my artwork. Your artwork? Hey, what have you been up to? <laughs> oh, just touching up a few of them posters. Pretty, ain't they? Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, they're just dandy. You know, California, sometimes I think you're in your second childhood. Drawing glasses and mustaches on pictures, just like a kid. Well, doggone, there ain't nothing else to do around here to amuse a man. And... Hey, wh where'd you get these? Oh, I uh, found a whole stack of them in this uh, drawer here. Well, give me some of them. Looks like it might be kind of fun at that. Sure, here they are, and uh, some charcoal, too. Who knows? Maybe one of us is another Rembrandt. Rembrandt? Uh, what outfits he wears? <laughs> hmm? Oh, quiet. Let me look through these posters. Hoppy, you've been working on that one for ten minutes now. Now, don't you want a new one? No, thanks, California. I find this one very interesting. Oh, dear. What intonation is taking that sheriff so long anyway? Uh, maybe he was hungrier than he thought. Go see if he's on his way back, will you? Yeah, sure. We ought to be in the payroll if we're going to mind the jail all day. Uh... <laughs> hey, Hoppy, look. What is it? There's a mob of men riding this way. Yeah. Well, there must be a dozen of them. Say, uh, you don't reckon it could be a lynch mob after the kid, do you? I'm afraid that's just what it is. Jumping catfish, uh, what are we going to do? Well, we'll have to try to talk some sense into their heads. Let's get out on the porch. 
I don't like the looks of this, Hoppy. They're packing more artillery than a regiment. Well, that's Cleats Johnson with them. Well, uh, we meet again, Cassidy. Where's the sheriff? He's not around right now. But he left me in charge. What can I do for you? You can turn Jimmy Bolton over to us and pronto. Mm. I think you men had better ride right back where you came from, peaceful like. Jimmy stays right here. Uh, who does he think he is? Uh, he better get out of the way. Come on, Cleet, we're with you. Looks like you're kind of outnumbered, cowboy. It's not the first time, Johnson. But that kid isn't going to be taken by any lynch mob while I'm around. Oh, lynch mob? Huh? You hear that, men? Uh, listen, Cassidy. We're all friends of Dutch Bolton. And we're taking Jimmy out of here so no lynch mob can get him. Now, get out of the way. Yeah, come on, let's Come on, what are we waiting for? Let's get Stay back, come all of you. Huh? All right, no, come no, on, stop it. It. I'm warning you, stay back or I'll... Oh! Hoppy! Hoppy! Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, Bad Medicine at Rimrock. Hoppy and California were left in charge of the Rimrock Jail where Jimmy Bolton was being held for the murder of Jeff Rutledge. A gang of men, friends of Jimmy's father, overpowered Hoppy and California and escaped with a young prisoner after wounding Hoppy in the shoulder. Feeling by now, Hoppy. Uh, not too bad. Do you think that bandage will stay on, Doc? Now, don't you worry about that, Cassidy. That'll hold. I'm sorry this happened, Cassidy. I shouldn't have been away so long, I guess. Oh, it wasn't your fault. I'm just sorry that they got away with Jimmy. Well, by doing it, they the same as proved he's guilty. You know, Dutch Bolton owns an old deserted ranch up in Devil's Canyon. And I'm betting that's where they took the kid. I'll get up a posse and go after him. Uh, that's like to develop into a first-class shooting war, Sheriff. Yeah, I'm afraid you're right. But everybody in town is demanding that we get Jimmy Bolton. He must be caught by all means. Sheriff, I've got a hunch a couple of men could get him easier uh, than a big posse. What do you mean, Cassidy? Bolton's gang will shoot on sight. Two yeah. men wouldn't stand a chance. Oh, wait a minute. Isn't there some trail leading into Bolton's place from the other end of Devil's Canyon? One they won't be watching? Say, I believe there is at that. What's your plan? Well, I was thinking California and I could sneak in there tonight and locate the kid without being discovered. If we could, I'm sure I could bring him back without a fight. Uh, but then, uh, it might Hoppy. be worth a try at that. I'll deputize the both of you. And if you're not back with him by breakfast, we'll clean out Devil's Canyon once and for all. <laughs> Cassidy, what, what are you... Not so loud, Jimmy. Well, what do you want? Don't you know Dad's men will shoot you if they find you here? Yeah, I guess I do. But let's not let them know it. Why did you come here? Jimmy, you've got to come back to Rimrock with me. Oh, no. I've had enough of that jail to last me a long time. But don't you see, by running away, you as good as admitted you're guilty of Jeff Rutledge's murder. Well, at least I hadn't been lynched for it. That's what Dad heard some of the people were about to do. Listen, Jimmy, that was just so much talk. Hmm? I think I can get the real murder to show his hand, but I'll need your help. I'd like to help, Mr. Cassidy, but I don't... It's your only chance, Jimmy. If you don't come back now, you'll be hunted down and killed. You don't stand a chance of keeping out of the hands of the law. Yeah, suppose you're right. Of course I am. You come back with me now, and by noon tomorrow, you'll be a free man. Well, all right, Mr. Cassidy. Uh, give me a hand, you... Good. Come on. Uh... <sighs> there you are. You can ride with me on top, huh? and we'll go back to the back trail, the same as we came. All right. Follow me. Come on, California. Don't worry, Hoppy. I'm right behind you. Well, what are you waiting for, Sheriff? Why keep the boat and get over in my office instead of taking him into the county seat? Now, take it easy, Doc. We want to have a little hearing first. Here comes California with Dutch Bolton and Cleet Johnson now. Good. Now we can get on with it. Sheriff, you got my kid, Sheriff. Simmer down now, Bolton. Jimmy's safe and sound, and you'll be seeing him in a minute. Are you, Cleet? Yeah, just fine, Sheriff. Oh, well, here's the great Cassidy. Thanks for the compliment, Johnson. Mm. So this is the medicine cow huh? You seem to go out of your way looking for trouble, Captain. I might say the same about you, Bolton. 
Well, Sheriff, let's get over to the doc's office. So, that's where you've got Jimmy. Yep, that's where he is. We're going to have a little meeting over there. But before we go, I'll relieve all you gents of your hardware so there won't be no trouble. Hand it over, Bolton. Why should I The just... sheriff said hand it over, Bolton. Now. All right. Yours too, Cleet. Here you are. Doc? You know I don't carry firearms, Sheriff. Oh, yeah, that's right. All ready, men? Let's go. California, I got a job for you. What is it, Copy? Here, take this knife. Now, look. See that sorrel mare standing over there in front of the office? Yeah, yeah, I see her. Before you come in, I want you to go over there. <laughs> that chair there, Johnson. I'll sit behind my desk. Everybody uh, here now, Doc? I uh, guess so. Yeah, here's California. <clears throat> All right, man. I, uh, I guess everybody knows that I figured Jimmy Bolton killed Jeff Rutledge. My idea was that he went back to talk to Jeff, shot him, and then escaped through the open window. I didn't do that. Yeah, then you ought to know it, sir. Yeah, I do know it now. Cassidy tells me that he found a fine layer of dust on the windowsill that hadn't been touched. So the killer couldn't have gone out that window. But then Rutledge must have been shot from the outside. That's what I thought, too, Clee Johnson. But Cassidy's got a different idea. Suppose you explain it, Hoppy. It's very simple. Whoever killed Jeff was in the room when everybody rushed in right after the shooting. What? He was hiding behind the door. And when the crowd pushed in, it was simple to mix in with the rest without being noticed in the excitement. Then it could have been anybody at the party, practically. Practically. Except that this man was a blackmailer as well as a murderer. Blackmailer? Yeah. And wanted for another murder, too. What's that, Cassidy? A picture of Jeff Rutledge's friend and killer. Take a good look. Why, it's the Doc. Doc Weaver. Wanted for murder. Why, why, it can't be. My picture hasn't been taken since... Since you grew a mustache and goatee, eh, Doc? Is this your idea of a joke, Cassidy? Murder's no joke, Weaver. And you're no real doctor, either. But it gave you a chance to steal Jimmy's gun while he was sick. That's a lie. You made a big mistake when you said you'd known Jeff for 27 years, Weaver. What do you mean, Cassidy? 27 years ago, Jeff Rutledge was serving time in state prison in Ohio. He told me about it a long time ago. So if you knew him then, Weaver... You were in prison, too. You think you're a pretty smart cowboy, don't you, Cassidy? Smart enough to know that when you ran into Jeff out here, you knew you could blackmail him. To keep Beth from finding out he'd been in prison, he'd have done anything. What's the matter, Doc? Not feeling so good. What's he after in that satchel? All right. Get your hands in the air. He's got a gun. I've killed before, and I won't hesitate to do it again. Better do as he says. But that's my gun, Sheriff. Shut up, kid. All right, Bolton. Get those guns from the Sheriff and those two cowboys and drop them in my satchel. And don't try any funny business or I'll drill your kid. Go ahead, Bolton. Do as he says. He's got the drop. That's being smart, Cassidy. You'll never get away with it, Doc. You better give yourself up. Uh, give myself up? No, thanks, Sheriff. I don't intend to stretch any rope in this godforsaken country. Now give me the satchel, Bolton. We'll track you down, Weaver. Ah, that's a good one. I've got your guns and your horses are over at your office. With that much thought, you'll never find me. Now stay where you are. I'll shoot every man that comes out this door. How do, he's getting away. A murdering coyote. Oh, what can we do? Come Easy, on. boys. He won't go far. Jimmy, where's that gun I left with you this morning? Uh, right here, Mr. He, he's stepping on that sorrel. Hey, look. look. He, he fell he come off his horse. Oh, look out, Hobby. He's going to... Now, back to Hop Along Cassidy. Yes, sir, California, that was as neat a trick as I've seen. Cutting the dark saddle girth that way. Ha, <laughs> ha, yeah. All of a sudden, he found himself sitting in the saddle with no horse under him. <laughs> Cassidy <laughs> seems to think that Weaver shot Jeff because Jeff wouldn't pay him any more blackmail. Well, have you two finished your checker game yet? Yeah, doggone, he beat me again, Harvey. <laughs> uh, are we heading out now? Yeah, I guess we'd better be heading back to the bar 20 before they send somebody out looking for us. I sure hate to see you go, man. Rimrock owes you a lot. Oh, shucks. Twarn't nothing, Sheriff. <laughs> hey, before you go, where in tarnation did you get that wanted for murder poster of Doc Weaver? Why, it was right here in your office. Well, that's funny. I always glance at them things, but I, I sure never saw that one. Take a look in your drawer there, Sheriff. Say, what is it? Every one of these men has a mustache and a goatee. Sure, we did that to all of them. 
And first thing you know, one of them turned out to be Doc Weaver. <laughs> well, I'll be. <laughs> Ever hear of Rembrandt, Sheriff? Rembrandt who? What's his outfit? Huh? Uh, Rembrandt Cassidy of the Bar 20. Huh? Yes, <laughs> oh. sir. <laughs> And so Hoppy writes an end to the story of bad medicine at Rimrock. The yarn Hoppy is going to tell you next is, well, if you want the real thrill and danger of an early West Range war, tune in and hear the next story, The Frightened Town. You'll really enjoy it. So remember to be with us for another fast-moving episode of Hopalong Cassidy. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Bad Medicine at Rimrock was written by Robert T. Smith. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production.